This is Ryan with Kaisings and Beer, and we're here at NSAC in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Uh, and I'm here with Larry from the Guys Games and Beer Show that's now international. Hell yeah, this is really great to be out in the country uh, here at NSAC 2024. And on top of playing some awesome games and sharing this with people, we are here with today. Eric Wormay from Flair. Welcome to the Guys Games and Beer Show. Yeah, so that's Travis over there getting into it. So. Uh, again, on the schedule, we're talking about, like, so, hand-in-hand, hand, like, obviously, we are a gaming and beer show. We talk, talk about entertainment, but, like, coming to the attack conventions, and this is not our first one. We've done others in the past. Like, there is a level of, uh, we kind of want to talk to a little bit about cybersecurity in the gaming industry, which, I, on the first glance, you're like, okay, you know, might not sound fun. Seriously, what's the risk here? Yeah, but, like, when you look into it, like, obviously, there's a lot of the line of, Gaming is a massive industry. People are spending billions of dollars every year on this on this industry to pay for skins, microtransactions, battle passes. They're buying games digitally. Um, and the more of that we conduct online with each other, it just widens this massive thing for risk. So I was talking to this, and I want to bring up an example from about two months ago. So there are, there's this game, food fight, first person shooter, Apex Legends. It is an arena shooter, Battle Royale, and it is massively popular. Two months ago, they had a pro league match. It was a closed match, not open to the public. And during this invitational match, two players literally got hacked mid-tournament with remote code execution. What that means is if somebody runs RCE on you, they can execute code on your computer and you can do jack shit about it. So what had happened is these players are playing a pro match and they're given wall hacks. So literally this guy is playing and he can suddenly start to see people through walls. And like, the guy's like putting his hands up like, I'm not a cheat, like, like literally, he has no idea what's going on. But the fact that that happened in the middle of a professional match is mind blowing. Um, so when they kind of went back and reviewed on this, um, Apex Legends runs on an older engine called Source, you know. Steam makes uh, makes a lot of popular games. They, they have a, an engine called the Source Engine, and since it is older, it is very vulnerable to execution of code. So, if that could happen at the top levels of play, you know, think about what can happen in the industry if, if we're not taking the proper steps to protect ourselves. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's quite a dramatic example. Uh, <laughs> being, being in the industry, uh, what kind of risks are you seeing in the uh, gaming industry? The, the risks associated with gaming are incredible. Like, at my company, what if I told you that most of the attacks that we see are because of Roblox, a video game that is aimed for children? So what happens is that in Roblox, it's pretty cool as a, as a video game because kids can learn Java, can learn programming, and they can create their own modules, just like in Minecraft. But you can share that to other people. Now, you have source code that is executed on a machine by a kid. What if that video game exfiltrated, that means extracted, all the passwords that were saved in your computer and that includes your parents' passwords, like their work email, their Microsoft Active Directory email, all of their credentials, just because your kid wanted to, to get some Roblox or whatever. So, video games are... Which, like, which is a respectable thing to do. <laughs> yeah. You, you want to you get some Roblox. Yeah, 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 of course, of course. Well, <laughs> So this is why video games are a huge vector for attacks because people get excited. They want to do fun stuff. They don't want to think twice about security and why are they doing this thing. So they give their trust and that can cause damage. And we're talking ransomware attacks. Like, you know that, that meme of a small domino that you push and then eventually, like, yeah, you crash down capitalism? Well, this... <laughs> So, this, you can do this, because your kid executed something on your machine, you can topple down an entire corporation and have their entire network locked down, and now it costs you millions in recovery. So, yeah, video so, games are... 
serious deal. Yeah, it's, I, and again, I think you touched on some really great points. I think gaming as, a, as an industry is a natural hotbed for, for some of this stuff because it, it incorporates some of the traditional things that come to hackers. There's a certain level of curiosity. You want to experiment, you want to play. People are passionate about it. A lot of things hey, when you're... you see the new mod? Yeah, oh, again, when you're... Uh, some of the most effective hacking is, 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 is social engineering. It is being able to manipulate people. It is being able to make them make rash decisions that may not be rational. You know, getting them to responsibly, like, oh, hey, I can get these free items, or I can, you know, get into this system. Like, they're, if they can think they can benefit, they might make bad decisions they wouldn't normally rationally do. So there's a level that you can prey upon people, um, and, and, and it leads to a lot of vulnerability. I mean, you know what, also, people are very passionate about video games. Like, we've heard of stalkers that look for celebrities, but the same is true for video games. There's some people, it's pretty much their life, if there's something that uh, their favorite game does, they get so angry, and now they can decide to take arms and target that video game company. Literally, just retaliation. Literally back to that same company that makes Apex Legends, the Respawn Entertainment, they also made Titanfall, right? Titanfall 2 servers, really popular game, they kept it running, but they neglected it for a long time. People were so passionate about that game that they wanted it to get fixed, they started DDoSing those servers. They started doing other hacks to those servers to be like, hey, respawn, fix your shit, or we're going to keep hitting it, because they were passionate and they wanted something done. So, like, people will do those things because it is something they are passionate about, and uh, that can be also very dangerous. So, uh, so I understand, like, okay, if I'm downloading a file to a shared family computer where there can be risks there. But what about devices? So the, the, maybe the parents have a, a device that is hooked to the family network, but it's never used for gaming. And then the kids have one that's hooked to the network, but it is, it is used for gaming all the time. Is there a risk of that? Something on that gaming computer jumping to through the whole network? So, I have bad news for you, the answer is yes. Any device that is in your network can be a vector for an attack. So this is why it's super important for people at home to make sure, like, update your router. Make sure that you're not able to do, um, like, to get control over the network. Because that spoiled apple into your own network can be the one that, that shuts you down and can cause that damage. So yeah, and we've seen also in the past, like, PlayStation devices used for an attack. So that device yeah. is connected. I was actually, when I was thinking of the question, I was thinking of a Nintendo Switch, but basically a PlayStation would be the equivalent in that idea. So, yeah, and I was thinking, oh, sir, your kid's sitting here playing a Switch, and you're working on your, you're working on your work computer, and now is it, is it sitting there at a risk? So, so what does your organization do to kind of work with companies to help mitigate some of those risks that they may be exposed to? So Flare is a threat exposure management company. What that means is that we do find information in places like the dark web, that parallel network where bad guys share information that they shouldn't. So what we do is that as a company, you tell what are your assets? Here's my domain. Here's my brand name. Like, let's say we have video game companies as customers. They are able to put their brand. Like, this is our character. This is our franchise. Franchise. So, if there's anything that is mentioned, if there's any source code that is shared, all that information, they are able to know as soon as this happens. So, this way, they can react to this. So, okay, we got a breach and um, we're helping companies to mitigate these these effects like if there's a leak passwords for example one of your employees passwords got leaked a hacker having access to that password has pretty much the keys to the entire organization and they could do a lot of damage we've heard from a company it, it was a third party like a, in, in the video game industry there's a lot of development that is done like by third parties that are done by companies that help you work because yeah an assistant studio because the studio itself cannot do anything well we got a case of a fortnite map 
Uh, this is the, the name Fortnite, the, the game for yeah, kids. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> there's a Fortnite map that got leaked by one of these associated studios. And this can create a lot of damage. Video game studios are investing way more money than Hollywood movies into publishing these things. When you have entire marketing campaigns that are aligned, you don't want some hacker in their basement scrapping your entire plans. So this is why organizations have to make sure that the things that are outside of their control, they are they, they must be aware of what's happening so that they can do damage control when it happens. And we've seen it recently, like there's a, there's a studio that got their Wolverine game spoiled before it was announced. So Insomniac Games, it was revealed to the world because of an attack that they were working on a Wolverine video game. That can cause a lot of damage for an organization. So, uh, what would you say are kind of sort of a, well, you must do these things to protect yourself. At least do these things. Are we talking enterprise or for people at home watching uh, this? So let's say people at home. Okay. Yeah. First, use good passwords. So, don't pick Sunshine123 and Sunshine124. So, easy password. Use two-factor authentication. Like, any time that you have a chance to subscribe to a service and enable 2FA, that will definitely help you to, to secure. Also, be cautious where you put your personal information and your credentials and all that. So, be, be wary that damage can be done if you're doing something wrong. So, be cautious. And I think, also, last thing, Make sure to update all of your systems, like software that you're using, your hardware. Make sure that you have the latest versions. That can help greatly. We know, like, we know you like to hit that, that pause button and be like, oh yeah, delay it for another day, but you know, if it's well worth doing. Uh, again, also, yeah, don't reuse passwords in multiple places if you can. I know it's a pain. Uh, again, yeah, the 2FA was a really great call. And it's not necessarily, again, you don't have to be the best top notch. You just have to really mitigate yourself to that risk and make yourself a harder or more unattractive target. And look for password managers. These are awesome. Like, I don't know my password to my bank or whatever. I have no clue. These are like 20-something random characters. I will never ever learn. This is very difficult for threat actors to get access to, to this. So password managers, that can help you a lot. So uh, Google Drive, OneDrive, those brand ideas, throw those passwords in there. What yeah. about my sticky notes? <laughs> But you know, I, you know what? I think a sticky note would be better than a text file on your desktop. No, that's right. No. Oh, you're, so, you're yes. a sticky note under the I was, yeah. I was doing a podcast not too long for people that are older, let's say. Like, and I was giving him some cybersecurity. Like, my mom won't use a password manager. I cannot have it. And I told her, you know what? Your notebook where you have your passwords, as long as they're different and complicated, this is fine having a notebook with handwritten passwords because hackers won't get into your house and oh stealing this so yeah the old school thieves wouldn't know what to do with it <laughs> yes and then you cipher all of that you create some <laughs> encryption so if they get access to it you have 10 puzzles to reach the decryption key <laughs> that people might want to check to see if they're, uh, you know, check their own personal 
use of uh, if they've been a compromise. I know that there are some services, especially in the U.S. I don't know why in Canada it's less popular, but um, in the U.S. there are some services that you can... Well, it's just nice in Canada, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, people are too kind here. They, they want to act, so... <laughs> Let me enter. So, uh, there, there, there's a few services that can help for your digital presence, but like, it is not efficient. It's... Yeah, it's, it's, it's not ideal, I would say. So take the time now, do good digital hygiene now, manage your passwords, uh, keep stuff from getting compromised. If anybody wants to check out what you guys do at Flare, where can they find you online and how, how can they look into it? Yeah, so flare.io, uh, pretty simple, pretty cool. Also, if people like uh, watching videos, uh, John Hammond is a very well-known YouTuber uh, that has done videos about our product. And this has helped us a lot. So one like very influential uh, hacker that is now using our product to uh, to showcase the, the use cases. So that's that's awesome. Very cool. All right, guys. This is about we've been at NSEC 2024. Uh, we're here with Flair. I'm Travis with Guys Games and Beer. But we're not done. We're not. Done. We're gonna move to the next we're segment. Segmenting. Segmenting. Right. Yeah. We're about segment. Oh. Segment. So the next part of the show that we're gonna do. We're going to do a beer. Oh, we're really just going right into it. Oh, well, no, we need our other numbers. We're going to get to the cast call. Yes. I said strategically and beat my beer to be ready for this segment. So, yes, you need something to do this. Wait, so we are doing beer cards. So, actually, you're going to introduce this beer to us because we've never had this before. Yes. Oh, do we do the song first? No, we're not doing the song. Beer don't, don't, do don't, do don't do it, 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 don't do it. I don't know what I said, but I'm scared. You should be scared. We have, hey, we, we, we have a theme song. song for Beer Court. That's definitely not just Night Court. But okay. No, okay. it's not Night Court. Totally original composition. That's right, yeah. we made our own. All right. Tiki, you coming up for Beer Court? Okay, all right. I can have... You can have one. Yeah, no, 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 we can open that one up too. Oh, I'll keep this one. Come on, man. You got to go around. You got to go around. All right. So we are going to... So we, we do a thing called beer court. What beer court is... Beer court? Beer court. Beer court. Beer court. Beer court. Beer court. We're going to judge. We're going to judge. We're going to judge this beer. Yes. <laughs> Let's see if this beer will pass the monster. Come on. Okay. By the way, I was not the one picking this. Uh, I think Olivier, our president, to have chosen this. It's, a, it's an amber. You can't go wrong with that. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Looks, like, looks like on the back it's a 6.9 in alcohol content. Uh, I have caramel taste oh, yeah. with fruity aroma and smooth finish. All yeah. right. So let's crack this open, guys, and see what we think of this beer. All right, how do I pronounce it? Boreal Cuivre. Uh, Coppery Boreal. Do we drink or do we cheer? Yeah. This one. We, we give yeah. a tra what did you say? It's, yeah, uh, uh, yes. You translated it? So, yeah, Boreal Cuivre, which pretty much means like copper. Okay. Okay, yeah. so it's an amber. It yeah, it, it, it's an amber. I'll explain after why that and, uh, yeah. Alright. Bottoms up, everybody. Cheers. 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 Something. Something. Yes. Okay. It's a little sweeter than I expected from the amber, but yeah, a lot sweeter than I would have thought about for an amber. Yes. Finish is bitter. Tell me what you think of this. Okay, I drink I drink a lot of amber ales. Um, this is again, it's, it's giving me pretty close to like a fixed gear. Uh, again, it's got, it definitely got that sweeter aftertaste though. The nice thing though, uh, again, there is a little bit of bitter at the end, but it doesn't linger on the tongue at all. Well, fixed gear is uh, a red. Yeah, it's a red. It's a, yeah. Okay. Again, it's, it's, on, it's on the red spectrum for sure. Okay. So, but uh, yeah, again, that's that's the closest thing I can think of close to it. But uh, yeah, absolutely. All right, Larry. What, what about you? What do you think about this one? Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of sweet. I didn't really have most of the amber that I drink are quite sweet. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think I'm getting the 
the same thing, but they, they do hide the uh, 6.9 pretty well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's that's right. well, but it's the higher alcohol. It's not, not going to hit you. Know? Yeah, you're not tasting the 6.9 on it. No. Not at all. No. It's a very, uh, yeah. And you know, drinking age in Quebec is 18 years old. So these are the kind of things that you appreciate when you're uh, younger. All right. So what's your impression? So this is emotional for me because this is a legendary brewery in Quebec. Microbreweries were not that popular back then. We had the big Molson and Labatt, but Boreal was the one that brought microbreweries to, to, to the, great, the, the greater public. So, and to introduce beer to the audience, they use colors. So this is why we have Boreal Red, Boreal Blanc, and ah. like copper is one of them. And this worked so well in like 1995 or something like that, that this has been a mainstay. And I wouldn't be surprised if companies, in, even in the US, follow the nomenclature of using color for like mass market. For sure, blonde and red is uh, yeah. Go ahead. very common. Yeah. yeah, so again, obviously, there's a lot of microbrewery and a small brewery craze in the U.S., and it tends to get a little exorbitant. Like, it's cool to see all these, these exorbitant yep. packaging and everything, but it gets very complicated, and I'm looking at it like, what the fuck am I about to drink? Yeah. Uh, give me something that's like, oh, hey, it's a coffee. I'm like, okay, you understand what you're about to get, and there's something nice to be said about that. Agreed on There's okay, 20 so descriptions of it. It's as normally fruity notes. We do a whole we do a whole screen about people describing it's beer flowery. in weird poetic way. I don't want poetry. I want beer. Okay, I'm trying to drink. And okay, right so right about the idea of explosions. So I just visited Asheville in South Bend, North Carolina, and uh, they didn't have any micro. In, 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 wow. Just in that city. Just in that city. Okay, I just real quick though. We gotta stay on top because yes. we are on, on our schedule, schedule, kids. Okay, so a whole lot. Yeah. 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 So before I do that, now I'm I gotta get a few more opinions first. So I'm gonna tell you, multi. You get the malt in this? Yeah. 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 I'm getting. I'm getting. I'm getting a fair multi. Well, well sweet. Malt, so yeah. 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 I, 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 I get that malt too. It's the like caramel. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Very caramel. Okay, so the rating system on this beer is fairly straightforward. Um, I'm going to go through two sets of questions. You're going to answer that question. That will tell you a lot about the beer right there. And then we're going to do a thumbs up, thumbs down. Okay, so we're going to start with Mel. Mel, you grabbing this one out of the party cooler. Depends on the weather. Okay. It's a chilly fall day. We're on the bonfire. Mike? There's a polar bear for, uh, like, as the logo. So, yes, it, it's a, like winter ski uh, party. Yes. Okay, wait. Party cooler? Okay, so probably not. So, so this, is party cooler. this beer is on my color of the spectrum, so absolutely. Party cooler? Of course. All right. Yeah, I get this one for the party cooler. All right, Larry, party cooler? Yeah, I go for the party cooler. All right. And, yes, I can grab this one on the party cooler. All right, so it's a six nine though, so this might be a later in the evening because you don't want to get hammered too quickly. Getting drunk first. Is the it, first, when you get to the party, it's better to kind of ease into it. I don't All right, know, maybe it's a kickstart, you know? Yeah. Next it's question. Next question is another one. Okay, same thing. You're in the pub. You order this at, uh, at the pub. Larry, go ahead and start that out. Uh, maybe not. It might be a little sweet. Okay. All right. Uh, I might be looking for something with a little more. All right, Ryan, pub? Uh, pub, I think I can get this one. I might be interested in trying probably some other offerings as well. So, what do you care about? What food? I'm not good at that. All right, pub? Uh, yes, with a meal. Maybe not drinking four pints of that, but with a meal, absolutely. See, we love it when you qualify it like that. That's exactly how we do this. Travis, pub, this is going to be Yeah, all right.
right, guys. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, thumbs up, thumbs down. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Straight forward. Three, two, one. Let's see what we got. Okay. Yay. That is an all thumbs up on that one, guys. So uh, I'm going to have you pronounce the name one more time, and Judge Tom is going to pass verdict on this beer. Yes. It is Montreal Cuivre. For being a beer that actually is a polar bear that comes out of Canada, which seems a little cliche to us, I find you guilty and sentencing you to drinking. <laughs> All right, guys, so we are Guys Games of Beer. We're a podcast out of Racine, Wisconsin. We review beers every week. We play games. We talk about all sorts of subjects. Hope you enjoyed the show. We will definitely catch you later. We'll see you next Tuesday at our regular Thanks, time. Thanks, everybody. Later, bye. 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 bye.